would like to share this morning is uh, a framework and an approach for integrated management and uh, towards develop sustainable development of marine invertebrate resources uh, with focus on city commercial. So we all know that marine biodiversity provides a lot of ecological functions. They give a lot of ecosystem goods and services, provisioning services, supporting culture, cultural services, and regulating services. Among our very important uh, resources are marine invertebrates. They are more, among the most diverse taxa. They are very economically important in various respects and yet they are among the most undervalued of our marine resources. Everybody loves marine invertebrates in terms of shellfish. We have the most important commercially important species like crustaceans, mollusks, echinoderms, and other minor species. Uh, but it's also important to note that they are a major source of livelihood of many poor small fishers. Uh, and some studies will show that Aside from these high value species, many of the other less important commercial species are actually very important in terms of domestic food security, which comprise the protein component of many poor coastal families. And of course, there are very high value species such as uni and trepa, which is also important in international global markets. However, the story of the sea cucumbers is the same as many invertebrates. Um, expanding global fisheries, many of these fisheries are exploited. In fact, a review that's not very recent showed that 34% of the global fisheries in invertebrates are collapsed or overexploited, and 20% have been hard, uh, are, are due to habitat degradation due to destructive fishing practices, such as benthic trolling here, nets, traps, and hand. Aside from fisheries, of course, and other raw materials such as for shellcraft, among the most prospective and important potential uses are drugs and other bioactive compounds that are just beginning to be developed you know, from several taxa, such as sponges, various mollusks, ascidians, and echinoderms. So now there is a big growing opportunity in biotechnology to mine marine genetic resources. It's a major opportunity in many places. We know biodiversity to be species, genetic, functional diversity, and now we're looking at chemical biodiversity. And here's an example of some of the Venus uh, snails. We all know this from the work of Dr. Oliveira and, and company, where we have at least 12,000 species known in the Philippines alone, of which if you have about 200 peptides each, you are talking about 2.45 million compounds. So this is the amount of chemical diversity that is mined or potentially available for just one taxon. Aside from their potential economic importance, uh, marine vertebrates are important in marine food webs and maintenance of ecosystem health. Many are filter feeders important in water quality maintenance, herbivores that uh, are important in grazing and maintaining over uh, growth of algae, uh, bioturbation, scavengers, and all of that. And I will focus on this group, the sea cucumbers, which are like considered earthworms of the sea. They're very important bioengineers. They filter particles from the water. They feed on detritus and are very important in cycling. And because of their burning activities, they also help oxygenate the sediments. And so they are important ecologically, but also very important commercially. The fisheries, as I said, is the same as other fisheries. Sea cucumber global fisheries are overly exploited, particularly in our region, <coughs> developing countries, especially the tropicals. There's ineffective management, considering the high diversity of many species uh, compared to temperate species, and also because the industry is really directly affecting small fishers versus in the temperate countries where you have more industrial stakeholders. So I'd like to point out in my talk, while we talk about natural resources, that it's very important for us to remember the social, cultural, aside from the economic aspects of management and conservation of biodiversity. 
So here's uh, statistics of the fishery production of cucumbers in the region. Uh, in red, for those from the Philippines, you'll see uh, it's a boom and bust fishery. We were at the top two decades ago, and now it's a crash. You'll see the other three uh, countries doing the same. It's a boom and bust, boom and bust fishery, which is typical for marine invertebrates because they're easy to harvest. And so we started reproducing very poor and small valued species. And thus, the development of high value or premium grade species is important because it provides economic incentive to manage and conserve these important resources. Currently, the supply is primarily dependent on harvesting from the wild, and this global fishery is expanding uh, very rapidly. Okay, so, my main points will focus on three things to illustrate an approach. I will talk on the socio ecological system framework for developing culture production of this, of at least one species, identify ecologically meaningful management units, and then look into the prospects for the discovery and development of high value products for bioactive compounds towards sustainable development goals and utilization. So culture production has become imperative because of the depleted stocks among the tropical species. You only have this species that is uh, now currently able for mass production. There are only a few globally that are produced or commercially important. So they're very important. Uh, sea cucumbers from our main colleagues know that they're also very culturally important in some countries like China. You know, they're considered to be one of the emperor's food. You know, so uh, so they're economically important. So what I have here is the wild species. They're very important. Sea grass. Uh, in the seagrass areas, this is the dried form of the for trepan, and of course, this is uh, part of a high-end banquet where you have sea cucumbers. And the uh, culture technology has been developed. What is the prospect? This species, the size of uh, the size and the value increases exponentially. Okay, such that one kilogram of the XL, which is about 16 pieces, can cost to over. $400 in the premium markets in China. Okay, the smallest here, which is about 320 grams to inches when it's dried at least export grade, will be at least 100. And yet, many of the production of the fishery is way, way below this. We're producing very, very small, we're harvesting too many low value species. And so, one of the things is to develop sustainable culture, and one of the aspects is to look at the production as a value chain and diversify production. So for example, many cases in the culture is land-based, and it's very capital intensive. Only a few can afford that. And so what we try to do is how do we diversify production systems in the sea using lower value ocean nursery systems instead of this kind of ponds, growing them, that will enable others to be benefit and to do grow out not only in ponds but also do sea ranching and restocking. And we've piloted this, and this is an opportunity for different sectors, local government, academe, individuals, people's organizations, indigenous and private owners, to engage and be, have, be, have access to aquaculture. Many of our aquaculture are only accessible to a few, you know. And so development technology in itself, you know, diversification can provide opportunities to open it to multi-stakeholder partnerships. So the social aspect and economic aspects can be tandem with technology development. For example, here is a communal sea ranch where it's managed by group fishers. It can serve ecological impacts as well as private and social economic benefits to promote social equity and incentives and to rebuild depleted populations at the same time. And the important inputs are production from the hatchery, monitoring evaluation, which is an important input by scientists, but the critical thing as well is governance, for this to have an impact on a bigger scale. So here are some of the examples in Northwestern Mindanao. We, uh, Luzon, we've worked with community-based models. See ranching here, where we, sorry, where we have a hatchery, and our restocking. And the restocking is they grow the juveniles themselves in ocean nursery and the government buying them back to receive 
restocking sites. So this is government initiated and supported. So it's public and private goods. In terms of technical support, monitoring is very important. It impacts, for example, here we have monitoring of times. This is releases. As you should see, over time, you are establishing rebuilding spawning population in a sea ranch, which is managed. And also can do a lot of studies on the impacts of um, environmental factors. And the important thing is that there's mass spawning. In less than a year, you establish uh, spawning stocks. And you see mass spawning because of the high level of, uh, for, of uh, densities and fertilization success. So your sea ranch, which is a production system, also functions as a reproductive reserve that has spillover benefits. You also have a lot of recruits. Uh, we stain our juveniles with chloroform stain so we can determine if they're from the hatch or not. And this data will show you that aside from the recruits that we release, there are recruits coming from the wild because it attracts the density of breeders attract the natural recruits. In addition to that, this was the value before the collapse of the fishery in this particular area. And in 2015, about five years after we have the sea ranch, the fishers in the surrounding areas have gotten increased landed capital. So there's economic returns as well as ecological benefits realized. Now moving on to a bigger scale. So from a local scale to a bigger scale, how do you scale up? And so you need to identify ecological <coughs> management units, which includes understanding different aspects such as this utilizing different approaches, so the aspect of interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary work, working with different stakeholders becomes very important. You know, so you have all the mapping, modeling, and important is the capacity building. So this is one of the aspects of connectivity that shows that there is strong connectivity in different regions, linked to habitat coupling, so here you will see that there are clusters, just to focus here, that are tightly connected. So those are ecologically meaningful. That means they're natural exchange of recruits and sources in this area. So those are ecologically meaningful management units that should be managed regionally or sub-regionally in Northwest Blue Zone, for example. This approach also allows you to identify priority areas for management. And then the genetic aspect also shows genetic diversity. For here, you'll see that in that region, you have three distinct genetic stocks. And you would like to keep that into consideration to maintain the genetic diversity. We also go through feedback communication to make sure that different stakeholders, decision makers, know about the information and are able to develop policies that are aligned to science-based information. So here are some of the hallmarks. You have genetic management, <coughs> understanding biophysical productivity, and more importantly, using that to develop management clusters. In the Philippines, local government units have jurisdiction in municipal waters. But the municipal waters are contiguous. You know, they're not managing an ecosystem. And so it's important to understand <coughs> regional or sub-regional scales that are appropriate for management. So in the Philippines also we have different climatic areas, which means the development of culture will have to, for example, take into account the different conditions in different parts of the country. Where do you put the production, where do you put the floating hapa, when do you put them there? At the same time, on a bigger scale, you have this genetic diversity. So you don't make stocks, you want to retain genetic diversity. Some stocks are resilient and most productive because they're locally adapted. So all of this information is now available to conserve genetic diversity while rebuilding stocks as well as enriching wild populations. <coughs> and finally, I get to the stage, so why do you do that? So you have TREPA, you have high value, but there are other products that can be developed. Sea cucumbers are among the invertebrates that have very rich, high value bioactive compounds that are known from nutraceuticals, pharmaceuticals and different uses, you know, from collagen to saponins, um, many different kinds of activities have been developed, including anti-cancer for different species of kinoderms and cucumbers. So again, what is the governance importance? And we've heard the Nagoya Protocol, and it's very important. There's a whole session going on on ABS, which is access and benefit sharing. Why is that important? 
regulations and collaboration, meaningful collaboration is very essential among scientists to be able to provide the benefits that are potential for our resources. And so as researchers, it's very important for us to keep, you know, and respect these rights. So it provides a fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources, thereby contributing to the conservation and sustainability use of biodiversity. And I'm very happy that this effort is being looked at and that aspect is very important for biodiversity, utilization, and development. Um, many of you are probably familiar with how that's used. Uh, genetic resources are used for different pur purposes. But the important thing is that you usually have a genetic resource provider and a user. And this can be different countries. Um, the Philippines, and like the ASEAN region, being the center of marine biodiversity, is more often a genetic resource provider. Okay? And we have a lot of interest groups to use that. And we need to have mutually agreed terms that will ensure that capability building will be developed so that everybody can have not only benefit sharing in terms of monetary and <coughs> And this is not only in areas within national jurisdiction. Globally, in areas beyond national jurisdiction, the use and utilization of marine genetic resources is a key important discussion now to improve and develop an internationally and legally binding instrument to augment UNCLOS. Because areas beyond national jurisdiction was not considered, they didn't think there was going to be a lot of biodiversity now we have deep sea mining, we have marine bioprospecting, all assisted with developments in biotechnology and ocean sciences. So all of this, if we think holistically and in an integrated manner, will provide many inputs to sustainable development. It will provide SMT development, manpower, sustainable production of goods, preserve, while preserving the marine environment, it can provide goods that will be useful for health and well-being, like drugs from the sea, and prospects for creation for more profit for other farmers in the production area. So it's a whole value chain approach and a holistic approach. And thus, uh, sustainable utilization development should be science-based and integrated. Scientists have inputs in terms of monitoring. It's very important. Uh, considering biophysical uh, connectivities, but it should involve stakeholders at different levels of governance in decision making and adhere to responsible sustainability practices. And I emphasize triple bottom lines, not only ecological sustainability. It has to also consider social, cultural, as well as economic sustainability principles. And the challenge is like in the Philippines we have pilot scales. How do you scale that up to make sure it's long-term ecological impacts? and equitable socioeconomic benefits are realized. We talk about blue economy. These are very important hallmarks of blue economy. At the same time, the challenge is how do we establish and have sustained good governance systems? And I'm not talking only about the local governments and the political. It's also the researchers like us. What governance mechanisms do we, among our collaboration, do to move forward sustainable development goals with the stakeholders? So, Maraming Salamat, thank you for your attention.